Hello, welcome to this video. In this video I will talk about uh, the topics we will cover in this course and our path through the scientific world of Python. We will of course start with Python as our programming language and first go through the basic and advanced features of Python and talk a little bit about how the syntax works, how the uh, different things in Python work such as like object-oriented programming, functions, um, loops, everything um, to get you started with Python and the Python syntax. And then we will have a look at um, the first layer in this diagram, which is just a collection of tools and libraries which are widely used uh, in Python and are very core features. So first we have IPython. IPython is, uh, it stands for Interactive Python and it's an uh, interactive Python kernel which you can just start and have a command line and then you can write any Python code and if you press enter it will execute this code and give you the result back. This is a very great tool to quickly try something out, um, write a few lines, see how it works, what it gives you back, um, but it's not really used for like creating big projects because you can't save what you wrote and um, it's very to, very easy to get confused in what you've done and what variables you created because you, it's like not really that easy to look at the code you've written before and every time you, re, you restart this kernel um, everything is lost and you will start with a fresh Python um, kernel. Then Jupyter, um, especially Jupyter Notebooks, um, build on top of this IPython kernel we will also create another video about Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter um, as this is a very important tool in Python development and um, it enables you to write code quickly and even show this uh, notebook to other people as um, like a documentation of your code because you can even include markdown um, and some documentation in the same file. Here on the right top uh, you can see such a notebook uh, you have these code cells and then at the top here for example you can see that you have some markdown with a formula and um, at the bottom some plots so you can include all of these uh, things in a notebook and make it visually very pleasing for everyone who wants to look at it. Then on the left you can see the IPython kernel um, where there's just a few lines of code written and you can see um, exactly what you get back um, if the line of code returns something. Then the next step will be NumPy. NumPy is a very very important library for Python. It is used for uh, storing data in multidimensional arrays and uh, this is one of the libraries uh, written in C++ and C and this makes this library very very efficient and um, it, had, it has lots of functions uh, which work on these NumPy arrays um, which are efficient and can do a lot of things right out of NumPy and there are also a lot of uh, libraries that build on top of NumPy so it's very important to know the core features of NumPy because it will come up over and over again in other libraries. Um, yeah, Here's just an image of um, the indexing in NumPy which is I would say one of the best features of NumPy. It supports um, different types of indexing uh, into these arrays and it's very powerful to uh, just grab subsets or restructure arrays in very few um, lines of code or even in one line of code. Then the next step um, are these libraries. Here we have uh, matplotlib which is the most important one for us um, and I would say it is also the most important library for plotting and creating figures. Um, many of the other plotting libraries in Python build on top of matplotlib. So here again it's very important to know uh, the basics of matplotlib to understand how the other libraries that build on top of this work. Um, and matplotlib is also a great tool to um, plot just directly from there and it can create very clean and good looking plots which are basically um, ready to publish and um, you can create some very impressive uh, figures with this. 
Uh, here are just three examples of figures you can create in Matplotlib. It even supports 3D plots, which you can see on the left. Um, you can create images, um, all these like heat images uh, that you can see at the top. And then on the right there are just examples of basic line plots over some uh, time. So uh, Matplotlib supports all kinds of plots uh, that you can think of and it's a very great tool to uh, know if you want to create some graphs or figures. Then the next um, important library we have on this layer is SciPy. SciPy um, is a great library for doing mathematics, um, working with signals. It also has a statistics submodule uh, which allows you to do uh, like statistical tests or fit statistical models to your data and it offers a lot of functionality for um, dealing with data um, and mathematics in an efficient way. Then we have Pandas. Pandas is the library for dealing with uh, relational data, so with uh, tabular data, and it supports uh, 1 to 3D um, data, so we have time series, so one-dimensional data, we can look at uh, tables of data, um, so 2D data, and it even supports three-dimensional data uh, structures and offers a lot of features that relational databases have. So you can uh, have different tables and join them in different ways uh, and merge this data. Um, and it also offers a lot of tools for processing this data such as, for example, creating summaries of different um, columns in these tab tables and you can do lots of processing uh, right inside Pandas and is also very efficient while not having this complex overhead of databases. And a great thing of Pandas is that it actually builds on top of NumPy, so the data in these um, tables is represented in NumPy arrays and you can actually access these NumPy arrays and this uh, makes it even better because you can use Py, uh, NumPy tools on Pandas data frames um, and get even more features into this Pandas library. Then here we have the next step um, which is another layer of uh, libraries which is a little further away from Python meaning that these are getting more specific and um, tailored to specific problems that you could encounter in um, doing science with Python. Um, first there's Altair. Altair is a plotting library uh, which is great for creating interactive plots and um, it's a great tool for statistical visualiz visualizations um, and it builds on top of Matplotlib so um, this is a great tool to create certain ki kinds of plots. Um, they're also very appealing and good looking in a few lines of code. Um, here are two examples for such plots. Um, it's very easy to plot, for example, variables against each other and create these um, summaries of how your data is distributed for data exploration where you can quickly see if um, two variables are correlated or um, how different classes in your data are, are structured in different variables. Then we have the stats models library. Stats models is the library um, that was mentioned before for doing statistics in Python and it tries to use um, the R syntax, syntax from the R programming language to make Python uh, more accessible to people who come from an R background and um, allow you to do all kinds of statistical analysis of data. Um, some examples are fitting uh, simple linear regression to data um, or fitting some models, statistical models to this data and you will get a great summary of um, how well these models fit and um, everything you need to know about your data. Then on this next layer we have um, a couple of libraries that are even further from Python so these are even more specific uh, and more um, for more made for certain problems that you encounter in programming and we'll have a look at XPy 
Um, the long name for it is exper experiment. Um, and it is used for creating experiments in Python. And um, whenever you want to create like the whole workflow of an experiment from um, structuring how everything should run, um, conducting the experiment, recording data, um, and saving this data somewhere, you can use Experiment. Um, it is a very powerful tool because it can interface with multiple devices, communicate um, over different devices, um, show on the screen different stimuli, for example. Um, yeah, and it allows to do a lot of things with few lines of code. Um, and I feel like I say this a lot, few lines of code, but it is a really great feature of Python that you can do many things with few lines of code, uh, which means that many people can easily follow code uh, because it's, while being small, very explainable and um, not like convoluted. Um, and therefore, it's also easier to write code that is uh, well structured because the longer a project gets, the more code you have, um, the less structure is at some point in there um, because things are added on the side and everything gets mixed up and it's getting more difficult the more code you have. Yeah, so here we have the overview of a whole workflow of creating an experiment in Python, um, then extracting the data from this experiment using NumPy and Pandas, um, exploring the data, visualize, visualizing the data using different plotting libraries, um, such as matplotlib, Altair, or Plot9. Um, then you can analyze data uh, with, for example, stats models and SciPy, and um, create a whole like basically experiment and analysis of something you want to figure out. Um, this, of course, all um, moves around the basic core features of Python. And here we have um, the Python programming language itself, of course, uh, SciPy, and especially the SciPy stack, which includes a couple of um, scientific programming languages, um, which include NumPy and Matplotlib. Um, the IPython kernel, which is very useful for uh, Jupyter Notebooks, and um, also Git. Git is um, a version control software, which we will also get into in another video. Here we have an overview over the weeks during this course. We will have 13 weeks of topics, and we will start with the introduction and organizational week, which is right now and after that continue with the actual content of this course, um, which you can see here. We will get into um, these different topics and try to show you um, everything you need to know to create scientific experiments in Python, how to analyze this data, how to create figures and plots that are actually um, publishable and that you can use in papers. Um, yeah. And if this looks a little too much for you, and if you say that you don't have that much knowledge about programming or you feel a little, little uncomfortable with Python, then there's also the basic programming in Python course, which will go over um, how to program in Python um, on a more basic level. And it's aimed for people who are uh, less experienced with programming and want to get into it and want to use Python as an introduction here. So this is also an option um, if you say that scientific programming in Python um, sounds like a bit too much for you right now, then you can also use, uh, you can also take the basic programming in Python course, which is also offered in this semester. But for everyone else, um, you're welcome in this course. And um, I hope we can go through these topics together and have a great semester.